Also, what's it, Germany? Well, this Sunday, Germans will decide who is going to govern the country. Johnny's will be there to bring you all of the updates, highlighting the African and Ghanaian connection, if possible, and hopefully increase your interest and knowledge about politics beyond Ghana, well, politics in Germany. Let's go over to our partners, the DW, uh, where Hans Brunt is standing by, of course, stepping in for Thomas Farrow. Uh, Hans, good to have you on the show today. Uh, educate us a bit about the German voting process. Well, what's special about the German voting process is that Germans actually have two votes. Uh, there's a mixture of a direct election of a candidate in a particular constituency in the area where people are living, and a second vote for a particular party. Uh, so the directly elected candidates, uh, there are just under 300 of them, get directly sent to parliament, and the other half of parliament, the other 300 or so, are, are elected via party lists. Uh, and people who are voting can, in fact, vote for a party on one hand and for a candidate from possibly another party on the, on the other hand. That's special. In addition to that, there are about uh, 60 million voters that will be voting, um, and it's not totally clear how many seats there will be in Parliament because of this complicated system. In mm -hmm. the end, uh, very difficult cal calculations have to be done. Uh, but it will be somewhere over 600 members of parliament elected on Sunday. Well, well, let's look at the chances of the candidates at the moment. They've been campaigning for months now. What are the chances? Well, Angela Merkel, the chancellor at the moment, who's from the Conservative Party, the Christian Democratic Party, is set to win this election. There is very little doubt that she will be beaten. Um, all uh, polls in recent days have shown that she's well ahead of her uh, closest rival, and that closest rival is someone called Martin Schulz mm. uh, from the Social Democrats. Um, he is polling at around 20 to 22 percent of the vote. Those two candidates seem pretty clear that they will uh, get into parliament, that this is how their parties, will, how well their parties will do. Apart from that, uh, there is a handful of smaller parties, and this is really where the race is going to be interesting this week. Um, those smaller parties range from a very far right-wing party called the Alternative for Germany, mm -hmm. which is very likely for the very first time to enter Parliament mm -hmm. in Germany, to the very far left-wing party called simply the Left Party. Uh, they've been in Parliament for several years already. Between those two, there are the Greens, there is the Market Liberal uh, free Democratic Party. Uh, so amongst those is the question, who will come third? Uh, who will be the strongest of the smaller parties? That's yeah. really where the race is going to be interesting. Right. Well, then let's look at the implications of both. Well, we've spoken about Angela Merkel and her chances. You've spoken about the AFD as well. That's also the very new dynamic in, the, in German politics. But for the implications for Angela Merkel, she must have been in power, if she wins, must have been in power for about 16 years how is that possible She's here in Africa well here in Africa it's really uh, difficult for 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 any president to rule for that long if that happens then they must have altered the constitution so to speak to be able to go beyond two terms yes indeed Angela Merkel has already done three terms she's been in power for 12 years now and if she wins again that will be another four years so then it will be 16 years mm. by the time this uh, parliamentary uh, uh, session is over. Um, in Germany, there is no restriction on the number of um, terms that a government leader can serve. And in fact, Helmut Kohl, maybe some of the viewers remember that name. He was in charge of Germany. He was the chancellor for 16 years, in fact, uh, mm. also during that time when the wall here in Berlin came down and Germany that was divided between East Germany, communist East Germany at the time, and uh, Western Germany uh, became reunited again. So it's possible, and I think uh, the reason for that is simply that there is a belief that uh, the leaders will in fact give up power when they are vo voted out of power. Mm -hmm. And I think um, everyone in Germany, uh, no one in Germany would suggest that Angela Merkel will try to cling on to power if she were, if she were voted out of power. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's the reason that there is no limitation on the number of terms that a leader mm. can serve. Well, here in Africa, that could spark a very interesting debate. But uh, let's look at the implications if the AFD turns to uh, be able to get into parliament. They are quite nationalistic. So we're looking at implications, for example, for migration. 
Yes, indeed. They are nationalistic to the extent of being right-wing and being racist in many of their statements. Um, they have been campaigning very hard on the basis of uh, pushing foreigners out of Germany. And of course, uh, because so many foreign migrants arrive in Germany in recent years, that's been an issue that's been at the forefront of this campaign mm. for all parties. And the AFD, these right-wing populists, uh, are using that presence of uh, hundreds of thousands of foreigners that have come in either as refugees or as migrants looking for work in Germany. Mm -hmm. They've been using that uh, to push their nationalist, their racist agenda, I think one has to say. For Angela Merkel, this is going to be very difficult because she will need to form a government. She will not be able to govern on her own. Her party will not get a majority by itself, so she will need partners to form a government. At the moment, that partner is the Social Democratic Party. In other words, at the moment, the two candidates, the two top candidates are, that are competing against each other are in fact more or less in government with each other at the moment. Mm. It seems likely that this, what we call the grand coalition, the coalition between the two largest parties in Germany, that that is not going to continue. Um, so then Angela Merkel may need the help of one or two of the smaller parties. That's why it's so important how well or how badly these smaller parties do. Mm. And at the moment, the only possibility is that she uh, forms a coalition with the Green Party, the environmentalist Green Party, and with the Free Democrats, the Liberal Market Democrats, uh, Liberal Market pa uh, Free Democrats. Mm. That would then be a three-party coalition which um, is very unusual in German history. Mm. It would be very, very interesting discussion, a discussion to have, especially how whoever comes into this coalition will be able to deal with other world leaders as well. But let's look at the mood in Germany at the moment. It's just Sunday, just a few days away from now. What is the mood generally? Well, generally, in fact, people here have been saying that the election campaign has been not very exciting. And the reason for that is simply that it seems certain that Angela Merkel is likely to is, is going to win and mm. that the second place will be held by the Social Democrats. So at the top of the uh, party spectrum, there's not really very much to discuss. And in fact, those two parties have not really been attacking each other particularly strongly. Um, they tend to agree on a lot of issues uh, because they have cooperated for many years in government. So the real excitement has been uh, at the, uh, on the question of who comes third um, and especially uh, the fact that these uh, right-wing populists, the alternative for Germany, will be entering parliament, this seems very likely. Um, and that has caused a lot of consternation, a lot of worry amongst uh, uh, political observers, uh, but has also caused quite a lot of friction um, in the political campaign. Uh, the AFD, the right-wing populists, are campaigning very vociferously. They have, for instance, um, sent people to disturb every campaign appearance that Angela Merkel has had. There have always been people there shouting her down, oh. blowing whistles and uh, uh, blowing horns and holding up uh, posters against her. Uh, they have really uh, disturbed her campaign quite oh. significantly. Mm. On the other hand, in Germany, obviously, Germany used to be uh, in the Second World War uh, governed by a s nationalist socialist, by a Nazi party. And um, if these uh, right-wing populists enter parliament, it will be the very first time since the Second World War mm. that a party of this political uh, orientation will again be in the German parliament. That's mm. causing a lot of discussion and quite a bit of concern. Quite a bit of concern. Well, I'm sure that Germany will get through that because we here in Africa will be looking at the connection, by the way. And I mean, it's been established quite well that Angela Merkel is more international and more uh, inclusive in nature. But thank you so much, Hans, for bringing us up to speed on what's happening. By the way, some of my colleagues will be joining you at the, at the uh, Deutsche Welle uh, for that coverage. So it'll be interesting. We'll keep uh, the conversation going. <laughs> Hans Brandt is standing in for our usual Thomas Farrell, bringing us up to speed on what's happening in Germany. Like we said, we will be in Germany uh, to bring you, of course, the African and the Ghana connection. You're still watching The Pulse with me, and up here. We'll have a conversation with my, the team that will be going to Germany right after this. Okay, so let me introduce you to who is going to Germany. Uh, the 
Ava Kumsin is editor here at Joy News, and he will be she will be leading uh, the team to Germany. Ava, you're welcome. Thank you, Gifty. Okay, so let's look at our plan. What's going to happen? What are we to expect on Sunday? Well, Gifty, first of all, as you know, uh, Joy News and DWTV have been partnering on a, a, a wide range of projects, and this is the latest. It is all aimed at building the capacity of. Uh, the personnel in our newsroom. So this is just the latest project. So we'll be in Germany uh, from 23rd September to 26th September to witness uh, the election coverage mm -hmm. and also learn lessons of DW's coverage of the elections. Yes. So as you know, uh, immigration and the, the impact of the refugee situation in Germany is going to be a major it's issue been in a the big election. Deal, certainly. Exactly. So that is one of the issues we'll be looking out for. And as part of our coverage, we will be speaking to a professor of the Free University of Berlin on, he's an expert on migration and integration, so he'll be talking to us about the impact of the influx of uh, refugees in Germany right. and how that could impact on the, uh, elections. the elections. Yes, on the day of the elections proper, that is Sunday, 24th September, um, we will be uh, visiting various polling stations in Berlin mm -hmm. and uh, also the party headquarters of the ruling uh, Social Democratic Party of which uh, Angela Merkel is a member. Right. Uh, we will also be doing a live connection from the DW headquarters straight to the Joy News uh, 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 studios here. Yes. So certainly. Uh, we'll bring you live coverage of that. All right. Th so that is something that you certainly should look forward to, a live connection between... Uh, I mean, I've been talking to Thomas Sparrow. I've spoken to Hans Brand that you saw today. I've spoken to Christopher Springgate, you know. So we've spoken to quite a number of all of their political correspondents. So on... Sunday we'll be having on Sunday we'll be having them uh, well cross over to us live from Germany as well but with this time with our team members they as well Ara, let's wrap up with this conversation do we have an idea uh, what the, uh, the the team I mean anything else that the team will be doing who and who are going by the way okay it's uh, myself and then Latif Idris right yes and so uh, the two of us will be going we will be based uh, specifically at the DW headquarters but as and when the team at the headquarters is uh, going round to you know um, touch base with the voters on the ground right. we will be following them as, as well. well so you will get to see all of that great I'm looking forward to see that I mean the last time I was in Germany was like uh, 2013 so this is like three years ago yeah. oh, four years ago so lots of things certainly have changed but I wish you a fantastic stay Thank three you. days stay by the way maybe after <laughs> three days you can stay uh, stay a little while if you my know. boss will allow me. yeah uh, well elvis this is like a public appeal to let Ava and latif stay a little more than three days so that they can have a look at berlin and look around germany as well but Ava, thank you very much thank jenny you. mercies as you go uh, to Germany. So like we said, we'll bring you all of the details that you need to know. We're actually also looking out for Germans in Ghana. If you're a German in Ghana, you want to be in touch with us. So, you know, we hear your views and your thoughts about the election in your country on Sunday. Uh, get in touch with me. You can get in touch, with, in touch with me on Facebook. Contact any of us here at Joy News and let's hear from you so we can share your story as well. Mm -hmm.